YouTube, Edgar here, and welcome to Artifexy, and here you will learn everything you ever wanted to know about world building, and then some. In previous videos, we've looked at place of articulation and manner of articulation. Now, let's look at the third and final consonant feature, voicing. To explain, hold your throat and say fan, except hold the F sound, fan. Hopefully, you shouldn't feel much going on in your throat, fan. Repeat this process, except this time say the word van. Again, hold the V sound, van. Feel that? You should feel a buzzing or vibration in your throat. See, F and V are a pair of consonants that are identical except for the buzzing that goes with V. We say that F is unvoiced or voiceless and V is voiced. Unvoiced meaning the vocal cords are inactive during sound production and voiced meaning the vocal cords are active, hence the buzzing. In a lot of languages, English included, consonants tend to show up in voiced and unvoiced pairs, like pa and ba, ta and da, sa and za, and so on. Notice the IPA chart has cells, and many of these cells are occupied by two symbols. These are the voiced and unvoiced pairings, like for example fa and va from earlier. Any symbol on the left will be voiceless, and those on the right are voiced. This left-right convention holds even if there is only one symbol in a cell, like in the nasals for example. As an aside, nasals are interesting. Notice that not only are they unpaired, they are all voiced as well. Within reason, we can unvoice any sound in the IPA by adding this diacritic mark. Icelandic features unvoiced nasal stops, as in hnífur, the Icelandic word for knife. Yai, spoken by about 5,000 speakers on Uvea Island, New Caledonia, features no less than six voiceless nasal stops. Here they are, but I am not even going to attempt to pronounce them. Anyways, all things considered, we should now be able to read the IPA, at least when it comes to consonants. So let's take this symbol. It's on the right, so it's voiced. Its place of articulation is alveolar, and its manner of articulation is lateral fricative. So this sound's technical name is a voiced alveolar lateral fricative. FYI, the naming convention is always voicing, followed by place of articulation, then manner of articulation. Now granted, this is some seriously cumbersome language right here, but it does give us all the info we need to produce the sound. Let's logic it out. Voiced means that during sound production the vocal cords are engaged. Alveolar means that the blade of the tongue needs to obstruct the airflow at the alveolar ridge, that bony ridge just behind the upper teeth. Lateral means it's an L-type sound and fricative means that the airflow should be turbulent, producing a distinctive hissing sound. Mix up all the ingredients and it'll sound something like this. Ja, or ja. Got it? Cool. Now, as much as possible, the IPA tries to harmonize with the Latin alphabet. So, for the most part, if you see a symbol that looks like an L, it'll be a sort of L-type sound. Just as a symbol that looks like an N, say, will be some sort of modification on your standard English N sound. In any case, voicing, although a very simple concept to grasp, extends way beyond a simple voiced voiceless duality. In addition to the standard method of voicing, we can execute sounds with a breathy voice. Ah. Uh, uh. Or with a creaky voice. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. You know, that Californian vocal fry type sound. Vocal fry. Added to all this, there's a thing called voice onset time. This is defined as the length of time that passes between the release of a stopped consonant and the onset of voicing. There are three distinctions here. One, negative voice onset time where the vocal cord vibration happens before the plosive release. Two, zero voice onset time, where the vocal cord vibration occurs with the plosive release. And three, positive voice onset time, where the vocal cord vibration begins after the plosive release. Examples would be ga, ka, and ka. This is important, especially when you consider aspiration, aka positive voice onset time. Denoted with that little superscript H there. Take the English words spot and pot. We think of the two P sounds as being the same, but they aren't. This P sound is aspirated, pa, i.e. is accompanied by a puff of air, and this one isn't, pa. English makes no distinction here, but many languages like Hindi, for example, do indeed distinguish between voiceless, 
voiced and aspirated consonants. Finally, do your pal Edgar a favor and whisper these two words for me. Sounds like pan and ban, right? But why? The only difference between pa and ba is voicing, and when whispering, all voicing is eliminated. So what gives? How are we still hearing two distinctly different words? The terms fortis and linus, Latin for strong and weak, refer to the energy used in producing consonants. The pa in pan is a fortis consonant and is produced with more energy than the ba in ban, a linus consonant. So in the absence of voicing, it is this fortis linus contrast that enables us to differentiate between pan and ban. Pan, ban, pan, ban. So there you have it, everything you ever wanted to know about voicing, and then some. Good morning, interweb. So I just wanted to sign off today by giving a huge shout out to the fine folks over on the Conlang subreddit. They've been seriously helpful in supplying their expertise and knowledge and without them these videos would not be possible. And that is not hyperbole, that's a fact. So if you dear viewer are in any way interested in the construction of fictional languages, I strongly recommend checking the Conlang subreddit out. Links in the doobly doo. As always, click the links on screen or in the description for more artifacts and content, like, and if you think I earned it, hit the subscribe button. Thank you all so much for watching. Edgar out.